What's up, Crypto Knights? Derek here with you again, and we've got a big, big story to talk about today. After the year-long lows that we hit in uh, the markets back on Friday, Bitcoin hit a year-long low. A lot of people were feeling very depressed, very defeated. You could kind of feel it in the air, uh, especially after a couple of months now, a few months really of, of kind of heading lower, making lower lows and uh, just really struggling in the market. I felt a real energy uh, in the greater cryptocurrency space of just a lot of people throwing in the towel, ready to give up hope. A lot of people online were saying, hey, you know, Bitcoin's going to 4K, it's going to 3K. Some people were even saying it's going to 1K. Now, while I wouldn't mind stocking up on some 1K Bitcoin uh, in the short term, I don't think that's going to happen. Um, but, you know, the kind of sentiment that was in the air is very obvious to a lot of people. Now, a lot of people are feeling a lot of pain in the market right now, especially people that came in early uh, or came in for the first time, I should say, in December and January at the highs. If they're still holding right now, they're really, really feeling the pain. And even some long-term crypto investors and traders, people that have been around for a long time, I've even heard a lot of those people saying, you know, we're in for a multiple year bear market and, you know, maybe we should just get out and uh, come back to crypto later, forget about it, do something else with our lives. A lot of stuff like that. And, you know, it's it's hard to see, it's hard to deal with this kind of sentiment and attitude because it's uh, a space that, you know, I invest a lot of my time in. I'm involved with it every day. You're probably involved with it every day. And, you know, we, we do get affected sometimes emotionally by the peaks and valleys and the swings in the market. But... Coming off of that um, year-long low on Friday, we got a really good news story that just broke. And, uh, you know, part of that news story coming out may have, um, you know, contributed to a really nice bounce in the markets, okay? We actually moved from that like $5,800 Bitcoin level all the way up to almost $6,700 in the last 24 hours, 24 to 48 hours. But in the last 24 hours, we've moved significantly from about 6,200 to almost 6,700 in Bitcoin, okay? So we got a nice bounce and part of the reason behind that, I believe, is this story that I want to talk to you about today. And this is about Coinbase Custody. Coinbase Custody is officially open for business. And this is a post from the Coinbase blog that you're looking at in front of you right now. This is from Sam McEngvill. He is the uh, product lead for Coinbase Custody. He's the guy in charge of the show, running everything for Coinbase Custody. And he wrote here, last week, Coinbase Custody accepted its first deposit. Today, we're proud to announce that we're officially open for business. Over the coming weeks, we'll continue onboarding a set of world-class clients that includes leading crypto hedge funds, exchanges, and ICO teams. Okay, and we've talked about Coinbase custody before. This is something that has been getting a lot of attention in the industry as of late. A lot of people have been talking about institutional money, big funds, uh, hedge funds, pension funds even in the future, getting involved in the crypto space and what that is going to mean for the markets. Okay, because as we've seen over the past several months, one of the biggest problems in the market right now and one of the main reasons why we've been struggling so much this year to make any kind of uh, you know real push upwards back towards those all-time highs we reached in December and January is just simply a lack of liquidity, okay? The volumes, the volumes on exchanges have completely dried up, okay? And in these lows that we've been experiencing the last couple of weeks, we've seen volume uh, volumes as low as $10 billion per day in the cryptocurrency markets. Now, if you go back to December and January, we were trading at four times that. You know, we had volumes of $40 billion a day, sometimes $50 billion a day. So 
The uh, really, really sharp decline in liquidity is a huge reason for why the market is where it's at. And the reason for that is because new money is simply not flowing into the markets. And in order for us to start getting that upward momentum, start moving higher and start gaining confidence for many investors to come back into this market, we're going to need to see a very sharp increase in capital flowing into this market. So who's going to bring all this capital in? Well, in December and January, when we got those crazy highs and, you know, the markets just went absolutely nuts, basically from October until November, it was just one crazy bull run, you know, one of the, the most amazing moves we've ever seen in any market in the history of the world. And that's, you know, what got a lot of people very excited about cryptocurrency very quickly. But most of those investors bringing that money in were actually retail investors. First, a lot of them first time crypto investors. And this was just due to the mania, the hysteria that uh, developed around Bitcoin as it went from $1,000 in March of last year all the way up to a peak of $20,000 in January of this year. And so that's a pretty short amount of time for an asset to rise an astronomical amount. And of course, that attracted a lot of news. You remember Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies was everywhere. You know, you probably had your mom or your grandma or whoever uh, random people even asking you about cryptocurrency. And this this was, you know, many people's first uh, experience of even hearing about cryptocurrency or understanding anything about what it was. So that mania really drove the prices high, okay? And that was a lot of capital, a lot of new money flowing in at once. Now, a lot of those retail investors, they just got completely wrecked, okay? They bought the top, uh, they bought high and, and sold low which you know is, is unfortunately what a lot of uh, inexperienced investors will do when they try to get rich quick and you know chase these crazy gains in a market, especially when they don't understand what they're investing in or how market cycles work, you know, how to protect downside risk and all that different kind of stuff that goes into doing something like this successfully long term. Uh, so, all of those people, not all of them, you know, some of them stuck around and, and some of them hopefully did learn about cryptocurrency and Bitcoin and what the blockchain is and why this stuff's all important. But a lot of them didn't. A lot of them got wrecked. They got out and they took their money with them, whatever was left of it. And, uh, you know, the liquidity just dried up. So what we need now is a big influx of capital and we need the volume to come back to the markets and we need it to come quickly and uh, with a force, just, just like it did last year, right? But this time around, it's not going to be the retail investors that lead the charge. This time around, it's going to be the institutional investors, the professional investors and traders. They're the ones that are going to bring this much needed liquidity. And you may ask yourself, well, you know, why haven't they done this so far? It's not like these people on Wall Street or, you know, these, these hedge fund guys, VC guys. It's not like they haven't been talking about cryptocurrency. It's not like they haven't been exposed to it. And you know they don't know anything about it. Of course they do. Uh, the problem has been this particular issue, and that issue is custody, custodianship, um, so custody of assets. So in order for a hedge fund or pension fund or any kind of institutional fund, whether it's uh, you know a family fund offered to the public, all those kind of things, okay, they need to follow very strict regulations about how their assets are stored, okay? And we have not had any option for these different investors out there that would want to get into this space to actually do it in a way that is regulated and secure for their customers. And that's what Coinbase custody is, okay? And it's open right now. If we look here, it, uh, it says here, over the past six years, Coinbase has pioneered leading crypto storage techniques and is currently responsible for the custody of more than $20 billion in crypto assets. 
Coinbase Custody builds on this expertise to offer a brand new independent solution for our institutional customers. This new cold storage system has undergone rigor rigorous penetration testing and cryptographic design review, and we plan further regular third-party examinations to ensure the platform's ongoing security. Coinbase Custody's unique features include on-chain segregation of crypto assets, very, very cool, split offline private keys that require a quorum of geographically distributed agents to use cryptographic hardware to sign transactions. So they've actually not only doing cold storage with private keys you know, offline safely secured, but they're also splitting those private keys, which means you actually need multiple parts of that private key. They're, they're stored in different geographic locations around the world. Okay, so they're taking security further. There's multiple layers of security, uh, robust cold storage, auditing, and reporting. And so this is a custody offering through a regulated institutional broker dealer. And this is the big game changer and why this is important, okay? So it says here, Coinbase Custody leverages the expertise and systems of our partner, Electronic Transaction Clearing or ETC. ETC is an SEC registered broker dealer and FINRA member subject to regulated financial reporting and independent audits. Okay. So this is what all of these institutional investors need in order for them to be able to stay within the regulatory environment of the United States and many other countries and still be able to get into this exciting new space that they've been wanting to get into. Because let's be realistic. I mean, yes, the market is volatile and right now we are down. But if you're trading in this market right now, there's still plenty of money to be made every day just because of the volatility in the markets. You know, even when crypto's down on a day like today, uh, we saw wax go up 50%. Okay, so there's still all kinds of opportunities. And so these institutional investors that are used to maybe making trades or, or seeing uh, movements in a market that may only move, you know, a few percent a week or a month, uh, they're licking their lips waiting, <laughs> waiting to get into this market where there is so much volatility and it's on those volatility spreads where really talented traders like the professionals that run these funds can make incredible gains for their customers. Okay, so what's coming next? You can see here, Coinbase Custody provides secure storage of crypto assets for institutions in both the US and Europe. Before the end of the year, we hope to bring this offering to Asia as well. They're currently supporting Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, and BCH, but they do plan to continue adding support for new assets and they're going to offer regular updates. So this is pretty amazing. Uh, here is the Bloomberg article here. And one of the important things to note is that they already have their first client, which is Polychain Capital, and they have more than $1 billion in crypto assets. And they are going to be the first or they already are the first uh, client for Coinbase Custody. Now, this Coinbase Custody um, service is available to clients with a minimum of $10 million for um, management that will be under management through Coinbase. And they charge a $100,000 setup fee and 10 basis points in monthly fees. Okay, so this is not uh, for your mom and pop shop investors. This is a service specifically set up for institutional investors, specifically the kind of people that we need to get into this market right now and bring liquidity. And why, you, you may say, okay, so first off, um, we had Sam, the uh, product lead for Coinbase Custody come out recently and say that he believes there's $20 billion sitting on the sidelines right now in institutional investors wanting to get into this market. Now, you may say, uh, $20 billion, it sounds like a lot, but not really a lot when you look at the crypto market, right? Because we had a market cap that was or, uh, $850 billion very briefly at our all-time highs. Now we're back in the 250 to $300 million range. We've been trading kind of between the, that range for uh, you know a month or two now. And you know you may say, well, $20 billion is not gonna get us back to where we were. But 
Here's something that a lot of people don't know, and I'm gonna pull up this little tweet here for you to look at. Um, and this tweet here, as it says, my favorite talking point to share with friends, JP Morgan estimated in November 2017, only $6 billion of fiat entered crypto through F and Bitcoin on ramps to support a total market cap of $300 billion. Institutional money will be a huge cascading domino effect, not an if, but when. Okay, so that's about uh, you know six six billion dollars of fiat turns into three hundred billion dollars in market cap. Uh, so you know take that twenty and you can do the math, right? We uh, and some other estimates have said that it's like one billion dollars in fiat is twenty billion dollars in uh, in um, the crypto markets. So $20 billion of fiat money moving into crypto in a very short amount of time will have a massive impact on the markets. And the big thing about this is once that starts happening, of course, the news cycle is going to change, right? We're going to get back into that irrational uh, greed uh, market cycle. Okay, right now we're in the irrational fear. Um, you know, people are very fearful. They are, they're very scared. But when this swings the other way, we've already seen how fast these markets can move. We saw it last year and it can and it will happen again once this all kicks off with the institutional investors. Now, not only that, but one more thing I wanna to touch on on this is that the US securities regulator um, from the SEC's five member commission voted five to zero to propose a rule to allow companies that sell ETFs to launch plain vanilla versions without first seeking approval from the SEC. So the SEC is saying it hopes that this rule change will boost competition and innovation by lowering the barriers to entry. This is massive, okay? The at the ETF market in uh, America is almost $4 trillion. And I've talked about it before. Uh, having a Bitcoin ETF would be probably the biggest thing that could happen to bring uh, massive amounts of liquidity into this market very quickly. And it looks like we are going to have the rules and regulations around creating an ETF drastically uh, smoothened, or I mean, it's gonna be a much lower barrier to entry. And I do believe that we are very close to getting a, B, a Bitcoin ETF. Now couple that with uh, custody solutions coming and uh, everything, all signs are pointing to institutional money starting to flood into this space over the next several months. And that, in my opinion, is how we're going to finally get out of this part of the market cycle and move back into a bullish market and a market that will have everyone that's held out through this difficult time very, very excited about the future. So let me know what you think. Do you think that this uh, Coinbase custody solution is really as big of a deal as everybody thinks it is? Uh, do you think the institutional money is going to start flooding in very quickly or do you have your doubts about that? And what do you think about Bitcoin ETFs? Do you think we're going to get one this year or next year or, you know, how far off in the future do you think we might be? So as always, thanks for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe and make sure that you click the notification bell so that you'll be automatically updated every time we release a new video on this channel. And please share this with your friends. Let everybody know that this is going on and that there is a lot of positive momentum in the crypto space moving forward. And with that, I'll talk to you again soon. Peace.